This video is brought to you by ChemPower, the reliable, quick, and scalable EV charging solution for everyone and everywhere. And this video is also brought to you by StarCharge, the largest EV charging manufacturer in the world. They are also a provider of residential and commercial battery storage with microgrid solutions. Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. You join me yet again at CES 2024 in Las Vegas. Now you guys know, of course, this channel is mostly dedicated to car reviews, but we've also kind of been merging the coverage into the EV ecosystem space, covering charging and reliability topics and new hardware and solutions to charging because I think it must be so confusing if you're buying an electric car to figure out what charger you're installing at your home, yes. But imagine if you're trying to build a network of chargers, what the heck do you use to provide high power charging solutions? Or if you're a fleet, what do you do to power all of your electric buses or F-150 Lightnings or whatever it would be? So I actually thought ABB is doing something really cool. You guys know we've covered ABB since the beginning. They've been producing high power DC charging equipment since before pretty much anyone else. And they have a whole display talking about the solutions of EV charging. These are their solutions, of course, and I'm gonna bring uh, some folks from ABB onto the channel in this episode to walk through what they're presenting. But uh, yeah, should be pretty fun. We're getting into everything charging solutions with ABB. <laughs> Well, you guys join me with us off, the man who knows it all. So uh, <laughs> Nice of you to say, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for having me over at the booth. Yeah. And glad that we get to get you on the channel. You really are integrated deeply into ABB and mm. with the charging products especially. Yeah. So yeah, give us a, a quick overview. What the heck are you showing this Yeah, show? we're really, really glad to be here at CES. I think that we're kind of in a really interesting time in the EV charging space. You know, we've been doing it for 13 years or so. Um, and something that we've kind of found over time is that we've been building chargers and proving use cases, improving individual technology elements, like we're at 50 kilowatts, can we get more power? Can we get yeah. more power out of a cable? And can you we get... were at 50 kilowatts when like there was 10 kilowatts. Right, there was, there was no car to charge it, right? <laughs> right yeah. But we're technology nerds, right? So we wanted to see what was possible. Um, but now we've, we've been here for a while, it's time to take stock. And we really want to think about charging more holistically now, and not just think about what new integration do we want to have? How do we think about it as a system? And the forefront of all of that is user experience. So that's why we're here. We're not showing a particular charger, but we're showing how charging works in the real world so we can make the best user experience. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the tech and stuff like that that's in there. And I'm not sure what the numbers are, just guessing. You probably have more high power equipment to charge electric cars installed than almost anyone. Yeah, I think, I think the official number is sold over 50,000 DC fast chargers uh, yeah. to date. And if you include our AC units as well, we're well over a million. Wow, that's so, crazy. Yeah. That's We've insane. been at it for a while. And I'm sure all of you who drive electric cars have at some point plugged into an ABB charger along the way. Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah. let's go through. Yep. Yeah. So we're actually going to we're gonna start in an area right, that your users may not know as much about because it's not public, but it's something I really think we should talk about, which is transit based big fleet charging and if you guys come in you just got to look at these displays you guys went all out making these miniaturized versions of yeah really nice vignettes parts. to highlight some interesting aspects of it but you know the bus space is one of those areas that really started to, to dabble with electric almost ahead of consumers and they've now moved to the point where we're moving at scale where we're looking at charging depots where you're putting in 50 100 chargers into these bus depots to move people around cities and from a usability and user experience perspective, we're actually seeing them do really cool stuff, right? So in here, what we're seeing now in depots is that we have these pantograph chargers that actually come down from the ceiling in the gantry. So a driver pulls in, they park, it's all automated, it tells them where they need to put the car, the pantograph comes down, the driver parts it in park and walks away, and the charging session begins. So are you making this whole pentagraph charging as a product all ABB? Yes. So is that the receptacle on the vehicle as well as the We dispenser? don't do the piece on the vehicle, but okay. there are standards. Okay. So they, they work together. We so work with like OEMs. A, a J1772, a pentagraph yes. charging. Yes, I've there is. never see, even seen it in yeah. real life before, to be yeah. honest. And you have the, you know, the power cabinets sit off on the side. This is HBC 360. These are 360 kilowatt cabinets mm -hmm. and they can power share it up to four 
units that come down from the ceiling wow. and provide that charging. How similar is that uh, actual charging box to what, you know, what we would see out in the public? It's like the next gen of Terra HP. Okay, very cool. So it's kind yeah. of similar in that regard. Yeah. And then you also have these Panagraph units that are on the road. And we said we had these at transit agencies across. If you go to St. Louis, they have about six of these. Oh, wow. Lake Tran in Ohio, they have them. So at like and, a bus stop, you roll up? Yeah, these things can deliver up to 600 kilowatts. Oh, dang. Okay, yeah. cool. Cool. Comes down, they do the turnaround stop, six to 10 minutes, they're charged and they're on their way. And uh, yeah, I guess from a grid side, they would just make sure they have enough capacity yeah. and jam the bus. Which with, a lot of these yeah. depots do have for now, but mm -hmm. we're now getting to the point where they need to do real grid upgrades mm -hmm. to get to that, to allow full electrification of the depot. And is there a benefit to pentagraph charging over plugging in? I know some unions yeah. like don't allow their drivers to yeah. plug in and stuff. Yeah. So why would, because I've also seen some bus yeah. depots have the plug in. Yes, and, and they do that too. Yeah. That's some of the benefit, right? Okay. Is that it makes it easier. And then you also, you can pack the buses in tight when you have the pantographs. Because otherwise, if you have the plug, you might need to have a little island for the charge post, um, or you have a reel that comes down from the ceiling. And this is just automated and makes it easy. Very cool. Okay, yeah. love it. I can't wait. I want to go visit something like this let's, one day. Let, let's do it. We yeah. have a few in the field, so we can go We can oh, go do it. That'd be amazing. That'd yeah. be really cool. Yeah. I want to charge a bus at 600 kilowatts. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Pretty epic. Um, so yeah, let's move over to, to on-the-go charging, which yeah, you guys great. are familiar with. Yeah, so here we're just kind of thinking about what the future of, of charging looks like on the road. Um, this is on the go for a big truck, right? So we're showing the megawatt charging solutions that are that are coming on soon. And isn't there already an ABB megawatt charging solution with MAN, perhaps? Yeah, we have. We just announced that partnership with MAN. We're doing stuff with Scania, yeah. um, and it's really an exciting time. There's a lot of work still to be done on the standards and bringing it up, um, but but it's really promising technology for those big trucks. Right, so the communication is different than CCS ISO 15118, I guess, for megawatt charging? Yeah, it's a little bit different, okay. and there are other layers, and we still gotta get through the standards process for some of them, Yeah. Uh, but it's a really exciting time on, on the truck side as well. Yeah. But on the light duty side, yep. and for commercial ve for, for vehicles yeah. and everything, yeah, we're, we're really excited about taking a user-centric approach, mm -hmm. right? And that means that sometimes you hear charging sessions not going very well. Yep, we, and we, we hear about it. And, yep. and we say, oh, it's user error. Yep. And in our mind, it's not user error, it's design error, mm -hmm. right? And so no matter what, the user should be able to know what to do and walk through the flow and end up with a successful charging session. And that's kind of what we're really trying to look forward to in 2024 is moving from industrialized metal boxes to ultimately consumer electronics, because that's okay. what chargers are. So that's maybe a hint of things to come, perhaps? We have a really exciting 2024 coming, and yeah. gotta stay tuned for, for how we do that. But yeah. we wanna deliver that consumer electronics, 99% session success rate kind of experience um, for folks, and that means making it easy, but it also means really maintaining the chargers as a digital asset. So love all of this, love the displays. This is what the industry needs is like, it's time for the big players to really come in yeah. and say, okay, enough of these one-off chargers that are breaking left and right. What yeah. are we gonna do to, again, build the charging park of the future, both for fleet and for on the road movement, but then servicing it is yeah. the big one. So I have rolled up to public charging stations in the past and yeah. I've met ABB technicians yeah. there working on ABB equipment. Yes. Can you shed some light into that service, that uptime, um, yeah. How does that actually work? Does the CPO buy the service contract from you? Can you give us some yeah. insight? Yeah, you know, we've we've been at it for a while, right? And we had some experience with different business models and ways to do it. And we found the best way to do it is to work with the CPOs and to have a direct agreement or engagement to provide that service. Um, and we've instituted this plan with a number of major national CPOs, both here and in Europe. Um, and even in some of our older units compared to other vendors, we're the top performing unit. And right. the reason for that is because we're monitoring those chargers 24 seven, we're making sure they're working, we're notifying the CPO of an issue when it happens, and we say, hey, don't worry about it, we're already rolling a truck, and we're going to take care of it. Right, so you as ABB, not even the CPO, has technicians in every major area that I've seen. Yeah. And you have a quick response time to just getting in and a bang. Absolutely, and that's even yeah. more important now when we talk about NEVI and public mm -hmm. charging. You can't have these units down for too long. Right. Right. So we want to know when the issue is, and we also bring the knowledge from our entire install base, so we can bring that knowledge to the fore that a CPO might not have. And then we can roll a truck, or we can even fix it remotely 
um, in a number of instances, uh, well over 60% of the time, we can just fix it remotely. So just to sort of finish up, we know where ABB has been. You yeah. are, of course, market leader from the very beginning in providing DC fast charging yeah. solutions, literally having the only one yeah. <laughs> back in the day. And we actually got to meet some of the folks who engineered yeah, those early right. units. That's that right. was really cool this week, getting to meet, you know, really some of your engineers. You brought everyone out. That was great. Yeah. And um, I mean, roughly, we know where you are today. You have a plenty of equipment installed out there. We've seen it. Terra 184 yeah. is kind of like dominating that all-in-one yeah. sort of medium power space. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there anything that we can share with our audience to say what to look forward to in the coming months and years? Yeah, I think there's just a lot of good stuff to look forward to in 2024 as we start to roll out, you know, new products with kind of this new forward-thinking, user-centric approach um, that really focuses on delivering the charging experience that drivers expect and deserve to receive. So stay tuned. Um, we'll have some exciting stuff in 2024. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. I can't thank you for the tour yeah, no, no, enough at your booth at CES. Yeah. Really cool. Love yeah, these displays, by the way. Polestar 1s on display. Little cool cars everywhere. All the uh, Someone who is an enthusiast built this display. That's right. Kind of want to steal it when you guys are done. So can't thank you enough <laughs> yeah, for the good tour. To see you again, that Kyle. was awesome. Appreciate it. And thank you guys for watching. Of course, plenty to come with ABB into the near future. We'll see you on another one soon. Bye-bye.